New interview, new me. What's up, everybody? It's me, Da Purple Sharpie, and I am here with Mo from Artifact 5. How are you doing today, Mo? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking, as always. Now, I understand you are in the process of creating a brand new game with a series of other people at Artifact 5. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, so it's called Lucky Me, and it's a puzzle shooter where everyone copies your your every move. So you got to use your stupidity against them to be, come out on top. Uh, so you shoot them, you get them to shoot each other. They're just gonna do whatever you do, and uh, you're just gonna win. Well, uh, color me surprised. Let's go ahead and get into <laughs> this crazy Ditto esque trailer right now. So obviously, after watching this trailer, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you, Mo. Can we get into some of the some of the nitty gritty? Go for it. All right. So my very first question is, obviously, this game is very heavily based upon physics, specifically the physics that happen when you obviously let loose a bullet. Uh, and your intention here is to try to allow the player to kind of like solve different puzzles every single level, especially inside of the level-based system, not inside of endless mode, which is another mode inside of the game that we'll get into later, but specifically the level-based system has you solving these different puzzles as the main character. Where did you get inspiration for all these different levels? So the, the inspiration from the game was from different music videos in the rap culture. Uh, like it's a common trope of being the original rapper and like having an original style and everyone copying you. So I it would be cool. I thought it would be cool to just integrate, integrate that into a game and have characters literally copy your moves. Um, and then from there, we found some emergent gameplay where certain scenarios create some sort of dilemmas and paradoxes that we capitalize on it and build up those puzzles that get more and more complicated over time. Now, I understand that this game was also developed inside of Unity. Is that correct? Yes. Actually, originally it was made with a, a, a tool called Bolt. So it's a script, visual scripting tool that then eventually became the Unity visual scripting uh, uh, component in, in, the, in the engine. Uh, but we've developed it further using just normal code. That's awesome. So I guess my question is, do you feel as though the physics that you're able to explore through the different scripting inside of Unity actively allow you to create some of these amazing items that we see, like the barrels that obviously allow AOE explosions, like the, the boards that you basically have to knock down and remove in order to move past the barriers, the tires that keep you in place and create more of a minefield for the player to navigate? Yeah, yeah, it gives us all these elements to be able to play with, and each element will like have an exponential effect to the complexity of those puzzles and uh, the amount of uh, different experiences we can give the players. Uh, can we talk a little bit about another mode inside of the game, specifically inside of the demo version of this game, which once again, currently available on Steam, cannot reiterate that enough for our listeners here, but we do have an endless mode that allows the player to kind of just like relax and not really think as hard and just worry about getting a high score instead of having to worry about like a finite number of enemies or a finite number of bullets. What was the, what was the thought process behind creating somewhat of a sandbox endless mode inside of this game? Uh, originally we wanted to have some sort of replayable mode, especially for the demo, just to give the player uh, something to do after finishing this the small set of levels we give uh, out in the demo. Um, but the more, more we worked on it, the more we thought it was super cool to build up. So yeah, uh, so it's a precisional mode where it spawns new enemies, new obstacles, and new explosives uh, with every action you take. And it kind of builds up to become more and more chaotic. It's the, 
it's the adventure becomes like playing single player chess with a thousand guns so you're you're having to, to maneuver so many guns so many obstacles uh and it's high score based so like the the better you do the higher you get and then the, the more you should post a screenshot into our socials I do want to say that it was really fun playing through that mode and watching items slowly start appearing. And it did get really difficult towards the end. Like I, I think it was at a level where it started spawning like five different uh, of those barriers basically. And I couldn't even get mm -hmm. around them because they had the big bads over there that all took like two different bullets to defeat. It was hard. It was hard and challenging, but I did enjoy that mode of it. Do you have a particular favorite aspect or a favorite uh, enemy or concept inside of the game that you're really fond of? I actually really enjoy the the big uh, the big baddies. They're uh, they're they do take two shots to kill, but they have to be shots at the same time, which is okay. what's unique about our game. And they open up the uh, possibilities to use them in different ways. For that, for the infinite mode, we actually. I find that my personal strategy is to use them as cover because yeah. they're much harder to kill than those uh, wooden barrier that get get blown up after the first shot. So if you can manage it so they can you can have a couple of them around you, they actually can stop bullets much more effectively. Now, speaking of effective, let's talk a little bit more about some of the ways that you educate the gamer throughout the gameplay in both the infinite mode and the level-based mode that is inside of the game. So you actually opt to use the kind of like city, almost like urban-esque landscape and aesthetic inside of the game to also explain to the player what they're supposed to be doing through graffitied words on the side. Uh, many puzzle-based games don't opt to use that 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 option for telling and educating their players can you talk to me about the decision behind that yeah i'm really not a fan of tutorials you have to read or watch uh, i think learning by doing is something games can do much better than any other medium uh, so yeah like having uh clues in an environment that if you get lost you can like kind of look around and understand but even without those we try to build up the puzzles and very small increments so you understand each mechanic one at a time uh, without really feeling that you've been playing through a tutorial like you're you're just playing the game and you, throughout the first five or so levels you've mastered the basics of it and then you get you can take off from there player comfort appears to be a really big theme when it comes to de the development cycle of this game and i know you have obviously made a previous project before through Artifact 5 that you all have already completed a couple of years back. Um, so I guess my question is, do you feel as though the process this time around is, is more focused on the comfort of the player, the accessibility for the player, and just overall ingenuity towards the player experience? Yeah, yeah. Our first game, Anamorphine, had a lot of what I just talked about in terms of communicating through environment and through doing. Uh, but that game was a lot more complicated. It was more of a walking simulator with a lot of heavy emotional mental health themes. Uh, it, it's set to tell a story without text, voice, or uh, action button. Um, so we, we picked up some of those skills along the way. Uh, the main difference between these two games is that Lucky Me is almost like a, an immediate reaction to what we did with Anamorphine. Uh, the main challenge with Anamorphine was like marketing and communicating what the game is about and why it's fun to play. Uh, so we set we were set to make a game that's really easy to communicate, really quick. You can quickly tell what's going on and how deep it can be uh, without a lot of explanations and a lot of convincing. So obviously this game is super duper easy to pick up as most people who have had an opportunity to play the demo will testify regarding, but I wanna talk about something that kind of hits the players without them even really playing the game, which is the soundtrack inside of the game. Now the demo only has a singular audio track that very much so fits in with the theme that you stated before, where a lot of reference was taken specifically from rap and hip hop music videos and that entire aesthetic. I'm interested because you did state that you are in the process of updating the music for the final version of the game. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, so so right now we're in a place where we have a really good game. We have a whole bunch of puzzles, so we want to build on the, the, the music identity of the game. Uh, not only that, we're actually working on a new mode where it's a rap battle mode. So it's like this underground uh, environment, like you're under a bridge that uh, 
there's like music going and like it's a bunch of uh, characters in the, in the, in the on stage uh, but there's also like this underground car show around you with like giant cars with massive subwoofers and that uh, the uh, with set of guns you have these megaphones that you get to kind of like battle rap with um and then with the, with the music playing, the music actually drives the speakers, and the, with the, with the beat, the subwoofer pressure would like trigger all these uh, megaphones, and trigger these these shots around, and like taking out these the different characters. So it gives Ooh. it uh, more of a rhythm identity, and like ties it more with the music. So it's really interesting to me that so much of the game seems to be falling into this early rap and hip hop aesthetic and style, obviously, as you mentioned with the subwoofers and the underground rap scene where you can actually battle someone. Was that all intentional? Like was was the point of the game to stay true to early and specifically late 70s, uh, mid 80s and even just all throughout the 90s rap and hip hop culture? Uh, for that specific mode, yes, we do we do sample a lot of that culture, but we also are like trying to cover the whole spectrum of rap and its evolution from those days till today, which also includes like the the more modern uh, beefs and little memes between the different rappers and how we can integrate it in the game. Now, I'm interested in the meme aspect because the very first thing anyone who plays through any level will notice is that the main character dabs. And that becomes a transition that you see later on throughout the game where there are a bunch of shadows that kind of fill up the screen and then the main character is suddenly inside of a next area, which is a really clean transition format. Are there other types of animations like that inside of the game that kind of harken to the current pop culture of things such as dabbing? Like I noticed inside of the start of the demo, you have the characters doing a dance. I didn't personally recognize, but seems very identifiable to people who may be of TikTok age in general. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we so we've been working on integrating more of those memes. Uh, I know the dab is really divisive between people either love them or really hate them. And I think it's fun to see the arguments uh, online. Uh, but we are expanding into other try to integrate more of the meme culture into the game and get it more just like give that game the humor it, it tries it, it really wants to be. Uh, so we, we, do, we do, we're building the system that changes the transitions based on what you've done in the in the level and give you a little uh, like easter egg animations uh we've just integrated uh, the obama mic drop but like the character <laughs> drops the gun and then the, the next level builds up so uh, we're we're having a lot of fun with this now speaking obviously of fun your team is literally only i believe four or five people in total but you all have managed to come out with really, really amazing updates, it seems like almost every three months. In addition, you have a relatively active Discord where you actively communicate with your fan base about updates that are coming out. Do you feel as though the community is very receptive to these changes that you're you're making and the transparency that you give the community whenever you do update the game? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think the community is what basically makes and breaks the game. And it's been a really cool uh chance to see like this feedback and having this feedback loop back and forth between us and the community. Um, it's one of the best parts of making a game these days. I have to agree with you there. Even though I've never personally made a game, I've been a part of a couple of communities. And when devs actually care like your team does and they're active inside of the community, they're, they're talking in the Discord, they're making the accessibility changes as you all made literally in the very last update at the time of this interview, it's always fantastic to see developers that really truly care like that you know it's 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 a pleasure um and on that note obviously we have unfortunately come to the close of this interview mo i want to thank you so much for your time and your energy today thanks for spending it with me thank you have a good day well, everybody, that's going to do it for yet another game developer interview today. And as a reminder, you too can wish list Lucky Me right now on Steam or join their Discord for additional updates as to when the game will be finally launching on Steam. I'm the Purple Sharpie and tune in for even more Game Does of Color Expo 2022.